What's good, y'all, and welcome to my review for TakeOver in yo house, motherfucker. Modest the motherfucker. But, um, overall, this was an amazing show. Was it better than Double or Nothing? Actually, no. I would actually give Double or Nothing the edge for this one, and I would honestly say this is probably the weakest out of all the TakeOvers that I saw, that I've seen. Like I said, I haven't seen them all, but I've seen, but, you know, it's all war games and up close there. This was honestly probably the weakest. This was honestly probably the weakest. It was still, like I meant before, that it, does, it was still an amazing show, but just not as it was. I think that really came down to there just not being a live crowd, you know? Like, sure, we had the NXT guys behind the fucking plexiglass, which is fucking stupid. We had that, but it's not the same as we have 10,000 strong streaming. NXT! NXT! You know, and all that shit. But overall, like I said, I like the show, love the show actually. But anyway, enough of me ramble, let's just dive right into the show. So first of all, let me talk about the layout. They brought out, they brought, well, the first act, I guess, use the original opening that they would have for these in-your-house shows. Which is, I see, like you said, like, this is like, like I mentioned before, this shit is all before my time. This is all stuff from like JD's generation, this is all before me. But it was nice to see them actually brought back something old school, like in your house. It was cool. I like the layout. I like the setup. They brought back the old set. Whether that's the exact same set they used to use for those in your house shows, or this is a different set that they kind of like modeled after the original one. I don't know. Either way, I like it. The only thing, only critique I would have over the, the set is that they placed the set pretty much right in front of the Titan Tron that they have at Full Sail University for the NXT show. They pretty much still had it there, and it just. And you, which are the interests, they would they would have the main Titan Tron playing whatever graphics they were playing, nice while you would also have the garage, the the while well, you would have the set right in front of it, and the in the window they would play another part of the Titan Tron. It looked a little off, honestly, and it just looked a little weird, you know. Like me personally, what I would have done during the entrances, I would have kept that thing off, and just had the side thing do the entrances. And then, when the matches that start, you would have Titan Tron play as it has in your house the top of it. From there, it actually looks pretty good, but when you want the entrance play, it just looks a little Andy off to me. I don't know if any of y'all felt like that, but that's just me. Also, there was something off with the sound in this. I don't know if <laughs> Kevin Gay was sleeping on the job or something, but maybe the man, maybe you need to take away his, uh, what? Because, <laughs> like, we, legit, we would have, like, this double, like, double audio thing going on for, like, all the entrances when they start up as with the bell ring. You would hear a little bit of the entrance before you would hear it on, again, but from, like, the main speaker. The same thing with the bell ringing. I don't know what that was all about. Just like, maybe some technical like glitch or something. I don't know, but that was definitely noticeable. I'm, not, I'm glad and thankful I wasn't the only person that noticed that. But let's start off with the beginning. So the show started off with the X6 women tag match between uh, Shotzi Blackheart. Uh, Mia Yim, my girl Tegan Knox, uh, Candice LeRae, uh, um, Raquel Gonzalez, and my girl Dakota Kai. Y'all know how much I love Dakota Kai. She is honestly probably outside outside of Candice, she has lived. She has done the best with her with her new heel gimmick as since turning. But Candice was has been fantastic as well. So is Johnny. We'll talk more about Johnny when we talk about the match with Keith Lee. But I love that, and you know, you guys know how much I love Tegan Knox because she dresses up like Captain Marvel. I love the gear, you know. Hopefully, she does get in the sequel. I would ask that. That would automatically, honestly, if, if, if Tegan Knox has a small cameo or whatever in Captain Marvel 2, it is instantly better than the first film. Just from Tegan Knox being in there. So, yeah. So, uh, Marvel, you might, you better hire this woman. Get her as a, I don't know, get her as an extra. Give her a cam. You have, I don't care. Have Breelers and beat her ass. I don't fucking know. Just get Tegan in that fucking movie. I want Tegan Knox in there. <laughs> or have Carol use a sh the shiniest wig. I don't know. I don't care. Just put, just put her in the movie. But anyway, she actually came out wearing different gear than this time. She, well, before, she's been wearing the usual, like, you know, the traditional cap to which, ooh, ugh. Oh. She looks fantastic, especially with like that ha with the hair she got now, with the color it is, like the orange color it is. It looks fantastic. Mwah. That was my favorite out Tegan's um, Captain Marvel looks is this one, the classic, you know, red, blue, and yellow. Mwah. Perfection. But this one was predominantly black, but the rest of it being like this darkish orange. Looks real cool. I don't know if that was actually used in the film or not, but it looks cool nonetheless. Um, 
like I said, this was a fun match. Nothing really made, nothing really that would you would think on that you would see, honestly, on a takeover card. But it, like I said, it was still a pretty good match. More of like a warm up to like get you ready for the rest of the show. It was honestly more like a pre-show match if you will. But I don't want to give him that much shade. It was still a, a really good match in a great way to open the show. So, of course, it started with Candace no and Mia, who, of course, like is one of the few most we've been building towards, which actually, Candace actually came out during entrance with, like, pixie wings. So, I thought that was a nice little touch there. But, um, she goes in there, you got Mia and Candace starting off. Candace instantly tags in Raquel, because, of course, you know, she's a heel, obviously. And then the match goes on from there, pretty, pretty solid match. You actually had everyone doing suicide dives and stuff. One thing I actually found interesting was that, uh, uh this actually kind of Nobody shows you how great in the ring Mia Yim is, but Mia actually went for suicide dive. She kind of like, you know how you usually run the ropes and then you do the jump? Well, for her, she, I think she like ran the ropes, stopped, but she definitely stopped, and then ran from like the middle, from like in the middle, the center of the ring, and then ran the rest of the way, and still managed to do it without killing herself like Brie Bella did. Just say, I just had to get my shot, and apparently, um, one of the wise also apparently... Leaked the end, leaked the spoiled the ending for the uh, AJ Styles Daniel Bryan IC match. So thanks for that. No respect for the fucking business. But then again, why should I not? Why am I not surprised for those fucking bitches? Anyway, <laughs> oh that's gonna get up to get to, oh, that's gonna that's gonna trigger somebody. But um, besides that, they um they so you have that everyone getting there in their suicide dive. There was a lot of stuff going on between Dakota and Raquel, where, like, Dakota almost hits Raquel, and then she's like, hey, watch, and there's actually one time where she actually gets that kick on Raquel, which she was meant to go for Tika, I think, or it might have been Shotzi. Now, could this mean that there might be teasing a breakup with, with Dakota and Raquel? Probably not. I also don't think that why they would. Raquel has been a great act, side piece to Dakota's act, and, and Raquel would die a thousand deaths by herself. She is extremely bored, and she isn't really that great in the ring. But, um, Tika next she won with a choke slam, so you got some Lady Kane action in there, which I always like to see. And then she got in the Shiniest Wizards for the 1, 2, 3. Kind of surprised that, that, the, that Tegan got the win, um, mostly because she's really not done much outside of her feud with, with, um, with Dakota when they had their Steel Cage match and that street fight they had at Tickle for Portland. She really hasn't done much, but yet here she is taking the win. It's almost like they're booking her like Carol is in the movies. <laughs> Sorry, I have to get my shots in. <laughs> Boy, that was me slapping my knee, by the way, if you heard that. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Um, I'm fine with this ending. I don't really mind it, but I do I think that maybe Shazza should have gotten the win instead. Or the pin, I should say, probably, since she has been gotten, since she has been, there's a lot more stop placed in her with that vignette she got where she was in a fucking tank ramming over cars, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, man, pretty solid way to open the show. Nothing really that major, that special. Also, uh, one other thing I forgot to mention, during the match, Dakota, not Dakota, Mia and Candice were fighting on the outside and they ended up like, going into the garage. Taking themselves out of my back into a normal tag match between Dakota and Raquel and Tegan and uh, Shotzi. But um, yeah, after that, um, we went into the we went into the match between Finn Bala and Damian Priest. This match was fucking awesome, man. This match was great. This was definitely a takeover worthy match. It would have been even better if they actually had a live uh, a live audience in there. But oh, and what other thing I've got to say, Marlo, man. Marlo on commentary with fans and like um during the Dakota match he said there's more drama in this ring than a real housewives reunion. I love Marlo and he also of course there are also references to other in your house shows that just went over my head because like I'm for this shit is before my time. But um I love Marlo man. I love his pop culture references. It's always a joy to hear the great Marlo and Allo. So uh, Finn Balor got the win on this one. I uh, well t I don't know why. Because really, because really, because really, because really um, um, Damien should have gotten the win. Now maybe he's getting called up for the main roster. Maybe that's why. Because uh, I, I don't see why else Finn Balor would have gotten the win here. But um, uh, first off, there's some crazy stuff going on with the staff. My God. Um, they start off the match, of course. Finn Balor makes the entrance, but then he like this match starts a fast pace. As soon as Finn Balor gets in the ring, he does a like a, a, a running drop kick into Damian Priest, gets him out of the ring, and they just go start going at it from there. So, um, like you know, uh, D D Damian throws um, uh, Finn Balor into the steel steps. 
he actually he also like uses the, the steals as a platform, he picks up Finn Balor and then drops him right on the apron. Looked nasty. He had a razor's edge on the apron. Look, the apron got it shit in this this today with this match. Tonight with this match. Like yikes. But um without a doubt, the cringiest spot of the match was when um Damien and where Damien and Finn was were on the apron. Damien was gonna go for the um for the um the razor's edge right from the apron into the steel steps, the bottom of the steel steps. And Finn managed to get off and like he like punched him, punched Damien, and he fell right onto the steel step. His back ended up getting him like right on the edge of the steel steps and bro Ooh was it nasty. That was a match but that had to hurt. Ooh, I would not want to be in Damien's and you can hear the thud man and it was a nasty spot. It was a nasty spot. So, anyway, Damien Victor gets back in the ring and Finn Balor wins for coup de grace. One, two, three. So, yeah, don't really get this ending. I also see why Finn Balor need to need the win here. It's, it felt like more that this should have went to uh, Dave, went to um, to Damien Priest. But, uh, whatever. Uh, ho I don't know if that means he's getting called up or they got, or just, I don't know. I definitely don't agree with that ending. So next up, we definitely had the match of the night with my man Johnny fucking wrestling and the limitless Keith Gresham came out on his Jagannath stretch hat, Black Lives Matter on it. So massive shout out to the, to the limitless. One. That's about all y'all are gonna get around me about what's going on in the world right now. There's a reason I haven't made a video on it. I don't want to me too. <laughs> and I just don't want to. Honestly, I, if you want to know what I think, I've done shit. So, but anyway. <laughs> anyway. I just don't like bringing up real shit like that on my channel. I just like, you know, keeping it to what I know. And maybe do these videos and all that shit. So that, if you guys remember why I haven't made anything on it, that's why. You want to you see me talk about it? Follow me on Twitter. I tweet some shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, any, or retweet some shit more, more, more accurately. But anyway, anyway, that's neither here nor there. So, um, uh, this match was fantastic. I am this now. This match was like, wasn't what I thought it was gonna be because, like, I, when I heard, oh, we're gonna get Keith Lee, Johnny Gargano, five star classic. Hell yeah. We didn't really get that, and that's what the one thing I'm probably going to get used to with Johnny's new hero character is the fact that we're not going to probably not going to see the fire star machine that puts Kenny Omega and Okada to shame, like what he did with Adam Cole, Ricochet, Tommaso Ciampa. We're pro we're not going to give that Tommaso that Tommaso that uh, Johnny Gargano anymore, or not at least anytime soon. Which is gonna take you some time to get used to, because that's one of the main reasons why I fell in love with Johnny was the fact that this man put on five star classics like he did. Like I've been loving the heel gimmick. J uh, Johnny Girl has done a fantastic job with it. It's been just absolutely entertaining to watch him just you know be that chicken shit heel on NXT TV. It's been fantastic, but not gonna lie, I kind of wish. Not gonna lie, I'm I'm definitely gonna miss that five star machine Johnny wrestling. Anyway. So, Johnny comes out, he actually dressed up, this time, funny enough, at first I thought he came dressed, I was wondering if he was still going to do the Marvel characters, since he turned heel, I was wondering if he was still going to do the Marvel thing, maybe just stick to villains now, but he actually came out, at first I thought he came out as Ezio because he had a cape on, on the side covering up his like right shoulder, which you guys know that in Assassin's Creed, all the Assassin's Creed Ezio had a cape that covered his right shoulder. So I thought at first I thought he was like dressing up as Etsy, but then I go on, but then I go on social media, found out from the main event gear Instagram account that actually it was a mixture between the Mandalorian with Kylo Ren's cape. So that was cool. Which funny enough, me and my best bud Eli Moore have been shooting this shit on Star Wars for the past three days. <laughs> so that's a little funny coincidence, mostly about his love for Ahsoka. But so that's a nice little funny coincidence right there. <laughs> But um, this match for that. So Johnny comes in from through the front door. He actually goes in there, locks the front door, puts the keys right in his trunk before we get into the match itself. This match was fucking bad. Without that match tonight. So of course that Keith Lee throwing Johnny around, which we'll talk about that one spot later on. But probably my best favorite part of the match was, besides of course you know him throwing him into the fucking plexiglass, was where Johnny just says, "I fucking I'm done." He goes over to the door. 
And there's actually like this, they had like this camera right by the door. Uh, and where he's like, yo, knock on the door, please. Ever ask me someone to please let me out, let me out. And for, and he's just kind of just like you're moving the door handle around, trying to get out, but Keaton finally uh, finds him and gets to him, and it was just perfect. That was probably my favorite spot of the match. Besides when around the end of the match, Keith Lee goes in there and just charges right into Johnny, throws him right into the plexiglass, just throws him out of there, just like he did to Adam Cole a while ago on NXT TV. Yeah, it was crazy. So anyway, Keith Lee won, and I, one of the things I love with the match was when uh, Keith Lee was going for like a power bomb, or like he was going to put him in a power bomb position. Johnny managed to counter it to like an arm bar while he was still holding on to him. And Keith Lee like picks him up and throws him down to the ground. I love shit like that. That, that looked cool. That was a that was an epic spot. But yeah, Keith Lee ends up winning with the Big Bang a catastrophe, the BBC. And yeah, I was just kind of surprised because I thought Johnny was going to win the match. Oh, and he also had Candice and Mia come in there as well, and they had a little scuffle. So the match where actually Johnny got out the car keys or the keys, the house keys. Out of his tr out of his trunk and like man and like nailed Keith Lee right in his eye, which is one thing that was focused on most of the match besides his head was his eye because he got injured from shoving his house keys into his eye from NXT earlier on in the week. So yeah, it looks like they're going to be continuing on this. So that's probably why they didn't give John the belt now. So maybe whenever whatever takeover Boston ends up becoming. For SummerSlam weekend, maybe that's when we're gonna get them. Where we're gonna get the top stage, or maybe they might just do it on a random this episode of NXT TV. Either well, way, see. Either way, this was definitely the match of the night. So right after this, we had the backlog brawl. The, the, yeah, the backlog brawl between Adam Cole, baby, and the Velveteen Dream. So Adam Cole comes out here on a fucking monster truck with the Undisputed Era on it. Which was great. And then my man, J the Velveteen Dream, comes out with a fucking Lamborghini. It was a yellow one. Don't know why they couldn't find a purple one. But uh, And then he comes out dressed up as Negan from The Walking Dead. Like, bruh. And on the back of the X, it's like Hollywood Hulk Hogan, like, you know, airbrushed on it. So, yeah. I mean, we all know Velveteen Dream loves Hulk Hogan. He came out dressed up during what was it? Takeover War Games 2018 when he faced up against Champa was when he dressed really dressed up as Hollywood Hulk Hogan. So or the NWO version of him anyway. Anyway, so that so that was pretty cool to see. And he also carried he also had the bat too as well. And Adam Cole tells him to drop the bat, drop the bat, he drops the bat. So these guys are going at it. they're just going all over the place, hitting each other over cars. They never went anywhere near the Lamborghini for obvious reasons. But they were like banging their heads against, you know, windshields or car doors. And there was this one, and like trash cans and like fire, fire extinguisher also got used as well during the match. But probably the craziest spot was, well, first there was a couple ones. But let me talk about, so eventually, no, no, let me talk about this one. So Dave, so while they're going at it, uh, Adam Cole eventually gets into a car and, and uh, Velveteen's hold up his held in the back. And he like locked the door. He's just kind of sitting in there. He's like he's like hitting the wind. He's in like the car doors. He chucks out one of the mirrors, just trying to like get out of there, Adam. Get experience the dream or whatever the hell he said. That was pretty cool. But eventually he gets out. They keep fighting. Then this woman in a fucking minivan comes out. Be like, did somebody call an Uber? And I'm like, wait, what? Did Adam call? Did seriously call an Uber while he was in that car? So then they go start fighting the car. The ref tells the woman to. Leaving shit, they're just spinning out of there. And then eventually the rest of the Undisputed Era comes out after he gets this, uh, after Adam Cole, or Velveteen Dream, gets his ladder propped up. He goes in there about to deliver the purple rainmaker of that elbow drop or whatever the hell it's called. And with, uh, but eventually they come in there, they stop him. But Adam, but Velveteen throw, pretty much like punches or whatever uh, Adam Cole off the ladder. And he lands right into the car, uh, right into the windshield of the, of the car. And it breaks, there's broken, his arm starts bleeding. I don't know if that was legit blood, he was legit being legit in pain, or that was just him, or just an amazing seller, and that was all makeup. But man, it looked like there was like broken glass stuck in his arm, he, his, his, like his elbow was bleeding. He, and, he, and Adam Cole looked like he was in fucking pain afterwards, man. You could see it all over his face. Nasty spot. 
Major props to Adam Cole for that spot. This man will do anything. <laughs> you ask him to. But, um, afterwards that, the Undisputed Era comes in there. They are like, throwing chairs into the ring. And <laughs> Marlo said, I feel like I'm having an ECW flash, though, which I actually love that reference because you guys didn't know. They're, like, on ECW, Mick Foley and Terry Funk were having a tag match. And they have to borrow a chair. And legit, everybody throws their chairs into the ring, burying their opponents. It's, it's a sight to behold. If you have not seen the footage, look it up. It is a sight to behold to see all those chairs just get thrown into the ring. It's a sight to behold if you haven't seen it. So, so after all these chairs come in there, eventually we had Dexter Loomis coming out of the car. And if you guys remember on NXT TV, he actually drew up a picture of him driving off with the rest of the Undisputed Era in the backseat of a car with him driving up. And that's what happens. He beats up the, the uh, Bobby Fish and uh, Roderick Strong, throws them both in the trunk in a car, and he drives off with them. <laughs> so anyway, after with all these chairs in the ring, Adam Cole gets back into the ring and delivers a, a, delivers a Panama Strong right on top of these chairs and gets the one, two, three. Now, what does this mean for Johnny Gargano? For that Johnny Gargano. For the Velveteen Dream, since now this is since the caveat with this match is that if 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 um, Velveteen doesn't win, he can't chomp the NXT title while Adam Cole still has it around his waist. Does this mean he's getting called up? Maybe, or is he just gonna be sticking around NXT, maybe feuding with Dexter Lumix or something? I don't know, but we'll have to wait and see. Although I gotta say, I fucking love Dexter Lumix. Ever since he started coming back on TV, I've actually fallen in love with the guy. He is amazing. I love the gimmick. He's just great. So anyway, afterwards, we then had, we actually, <laughs> we actually have this ad where you have the Peter, whatever the guy, whatever his name is, the guy that was actually at all of the other uh, In Your House shows. He says, you know, he does the whole, he's, oh, oh, one of them I forgot to mention. They actually had a, all the original, they actually did like, kind of like, um, like redid some of the ads from the In Your House shows, like they had, and the following messages are brought to you by, you know, by William Regal, and you have these commercials, like one of them was for the WWE ice cream bars, which I've still yet to try, I want to try them, just see what they taste like, uh, and then another one was this one for like ICW or whatever it was, it was one that Bret Hart did, but with Adam Cole this time, that one was also pretty good, but this one was probably my favorite out of the bunch, because you had the dude going in there and be like, oh yes, you can get these new shirts off, and at 1-900-WWE shop. And that's someone reminds me, like, fam, 1-900, that was ain't a thing. This ain't the 90s anymore. He's like, wait, what? Well, apparently TV, well, apparently technology has made, has made 1-900, 1-900, that was obsolete. He didn't say obsolete, but I just threw it in there. And then he goes on about, you can still get him on the internet. And, you know, he's talking about, like, social media. He's on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And then he says his personal favorite is AOL chat rooms. <laughs> and then they transition to DX, struggling how to work a fucking computer. <laughs> like, you got Road Dog not doing it. You got Shawn Michaels, like, like... Deli like pressing individual keys, and then you got the game Triple H just like hitting the damn thing, hitting the monitor, which was just fucking hilarious to watch, man. I love DX. <laughs> I love the game, man. He's so, he's so funny. All right. So after that, we had the Carrion Cross match versus Tommaso Ciampa. This match was about, oh, this match was also great. First of all, I gotta say, I fucking love Carrion Cross. I fell in love with him as soon as I saw his entrance. I fucking love his theme. I love his look. And I love that fucking entrance. And I love that they actually had the NXT crowd chanting, Fall in press. Fall in press. It sounded like a fucking cult meeting, which is great. So the match obviously was a squash match with Champa. Champa did get some offense in. There were some scary neck bumps. Why Champa's taking neck bumps? I don't know. Does a man have a fucking death wish? Who knows? But. Yeah, Karrion Cross wins with that submission with that submission he has, and Tommaso Champa and Tommaso uh, just passes out. He doesn't tap. He doesn't get. He doesn't get pinned. He passes out. So Champa still looks good, and Karrion Cross looks like an absolute fucking monster. Can't wait to see more of Karrion Cross. He's he's definitely going to be one of the one of the big guys, one of the big boys we're going to be seeing on NXT for the for, for the new foreseeable future, which I can't wait to see because I've really fallen in love with this guy and I love that fucking entrance. So then we have the main event, which of course was the women's triple threat match between Charlotte, Raina Ripley, and my girl Io Shirai. My girl Io, of course, won the match. Hell yes, she is your new NXT Women's Champion. 
fuck yes. This match was overall really good. Really, really good. Very good match. Um, of course, you know, start off the match with, like, you know, Charlotte instantly get out of the ring, telling EO and Shane, and, uh, it's not Shayna, EO and, uh, Rhea to, like, yo, you guys go fight each other. So then they go out, and Charlotte gets in there, gets some cheap shots. She gets, like, you know, does her, like, Irish, does, like, her, you know, her chops and everything. They eventually, the action, the action falls out to the outside. They're just going out, throwing each other in still steps and shit. And eventually, EO like it's like eventually Charlotte throws EO into the um, into the window or the fake prop window. And then while EO, well not EO, when uh, where Arena and Charlotte are facing off, we see uh, we see EO is actually on top of the roof of the of the of the stage. Now at first I thought she was going to do a moon salt off of it, but instead she does a cross body onto both of them. Looked great. They get back into the ring. Charlotte locks in the figure the figure four leg lock. Into Rhea Ripley, which turns into the figure eight, and uh, then we see Io going for a moonsault and pin Rhea Ripley as Shaw's trying to get out of the figure four, but she can't in the time to break the pin. Um, don't know why Shaw wasn't pinned. Oh, I know the reason why because of political nonsense, but I digress. Um, good ending. I wish Charlotte was the one that got pinned and not Rhea because she has been. They absolutely destroy Rhea after what happened at WrestleMania. Like, I didn't like. I, like, Raina should have never lost the ball. All of her men, momentum after that <laughs> got killed. From when she got the title back in, like, like the end of last year, she has been absolutely dead since that, after she lost the belt. Don't know why she had to take the pin. Well, I know the reason, because, because oh, God forbid we pin, we, we, um, pin the queen. But, you know, whatever. Either way, the right winner, the right woman won. E was your new champion, so I'm not going to complain too much. This is going to be bad. So, you know, I'm happy for EO. Can't really see what her side plays are going to look like. They actually, like, win the whole nine yards to celebrate. There was confetti, streamers, all the night, the whole nine yards. It was great to see. So, yeah, man. Overall, uh, TakeOver In Your House was a fantastic show. Not as good as some of the other TakeOvers. Like I said, this was probably the weakest of TakeOvers I saw. But still, an amazing show that I would highly recommend you guys check out if you guys did not watch it. So, overall, I'm going to give... Take over in your reason, house. A uh, nine point five. Yes, not a ten. I know, shocking. <laughs> but um, yeah. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe for new. Follow the Instagram, Twitter, like this on the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.